When Degeneration X reformed in 2006, many had high hopes. Shawn Michaels and Triple H were early pioneers of the Attitude Era, laying the land for what was to come in late 1997 and early 1998. In 2006 though, times had changed. The landscape of the WWE was quite different and along with this, the original Degenerates themselves were very different people. Triple H was now married into the McMahon family and Shawn Michaels had found God. The once disruptive, unruly and boisterous duo of HBK and Triple H were now pretty settled down and while many fans thought the reintroduction of D-Generation X would mean a return to anarchy in the WWE, again times had changed for not only Shawn Michaels and Triple H but the WWE itself was a much different place when comparing 2006 to 1997. Still, DX's reunion gave hope to older fans of the WWE and you best believe that the WWE would milk that hope for all it's worth. So in today's video, let's look at the 2006 reunion of D-Generation X. Triple H and Shawn Michaels had an excellent feud between 2002 and 2004, with Shawn as the babyface and Triple H as the heel. Their matches together were excellent, and I think this was the main reason why the DX reunion didn't happen sooner. HBK vs Triple H happened on multiple occasions throughout this time period, with some of their matches being bona fide classics. But we will talk about this feud another time. All you need to know is Sean and Hunter and Storyline were not on great terms going into 2006. The seeds were planted for a DX reunion at WrestleMania 22. HBK had a match with Vince McMahon at Mania because Sean had told Vince to grow up and move on from the Survivor Series 1997 incident, something that Vince didn't take too kindly to. During the match, on top of a ladder, Sean performed the classic DX crotch chop out of nowhere, getting a huge ovation in the process. It was odd seeing this, Sean had not performed the crotch chop during his entire return run and HBK hearkening back to his old DX days got the fans going nuts at WrestleMania 22. That wasn't all though, later in the night, Triple H had a match with John Cena and Triple H also performed the classic DX taunt. Keep in mind though, Triple H was still a heel here but the fans were very much in his corner during this entire bout. So this got the world talking, why did HBK and Hunter do this in their separate matches? Raw the following evening gave us no hints at all about what was going to happen, things just carried on as normal. Sean remained a babyface and his feud with Vince McMahon would continue while Triple H would continue working as a bad guy. The April 10th edition of Raw the following week saw Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon attend church to mock Shawn Michaels and his tag partner for the upcoming pay per view. Yes, Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon were going to take on Shawn Michaels and God live at WWE Backlash. By the way, this segment with Shane and Vince going to church was great, if you haven't saw this go out of your way to watch it. Also at Backlash, Triple H would be featured in a WWE Championship match, a triple threat showdown that also featured Edge and WWE Champion John Cena. It must have been decided then by the April 17th edition of Raw that DX were indeed going to get back together. At the top of this show, Sean took Vince out with Sweet Chin Music only to run back into the ring and perform the DX crotch chop once again to Vince McMahon. After this segment, Vince McMahon took out his frustrations on Triple H by booking him in a handicap match against Edge and John Cena. While we would still have to wait a while for the official DX reunion, this was the first time that a Triple H babyface turn had been hinted at. I definitely would have preferred if Shawn Michaels turned heel and the reunited DX returned as bad guys, but it's irrelevant now, we'll talk a bit about that later. Michaels also squared off with Umaga on this episode of Raw and both HBK and Triple H lost their matches on this night. So with Backlash, Shawn Michaels and God took on Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon. People ripped this apart and call it dumb and silly and yes, that's the whole point of it and it's really surprising to me how many people seem to take the moral high ground with this when really the whole thing was put together as a joke. 
I thought Vince McMahon's work was excellent during this whole program, and Shane too doesn't get enough credit. If you watch Shane closely during all of this, he knows it's dumb, he knows his dad has lost the plot, but he is forced to play along with it while he shakes his head in disbelief. Now, I'm not saying for a moment that this was one of Vince McMahon's finest ideas when it comes to creative, but it's just so silly that it has become memorable. People also say that Shawn's beliefs were being mocked here, but come on, this is Shawn Michaels. If he didn't want to do anything on TV, all he had to do was say no and it wouldn't have happened. Anyway, Sean took out both Shane and Vince with super kicks. He performed the crotch chop, and it seemed like Sean was going to win this match. However, the Spirit Squad came to the ring to attack HBK. This eventually led to Vince McMahon getting the pinfall win. Later in the evening, Triple H was pinned in a forgotten yet excellent triple threat match with Edge and John Cena. After losing the match, Triple H took out his opponents with his sledgehammer and delivered the DX crotch chops to his opponents. The next night on Raw, Vince took the night off and allowed the Spirit Squad to run Monday Night Raw. The Spirit Squad made HBK and Triple H referees on this night. HBK refereed the Rob Conway vs Kane match, and Triple H would referee the main event featuring Kenny of the Spirit Squad taking on John Cena for the WWE Championship. When Kenny put his hands on Triple H, the game punched Kenny and took out members of the Spirit Squad before making his way back up the ramp, leaving John Cena to get attacked by the remaining members of the male cheerleader faction. As Triple H made his way to the top of the ramp, Shawn Michaels walked out. The crowd began chanting for DX as the two looked at each other, but Triple H walked away as Shawn dashed to the ring to take out the Spirit Squad. The two men now had a common enemy, and the reunion had been officially teased on TV. We would need to wait until next week though to see what would happen next. The May 8th edition of Raw then, Triple H kicked off the show by saying he wants a WWE Championship match. Vince McMahon came to the ring, and Vince said he would not be giving Triple H a title match due to Hunter defying him over the last few weeks. When Triple H called his boss Vince, Vince got angry and said his name was Mr McMahon and he told Triple H to go home and take the night off. Angered, Triple H came to the ring during the main event, a main event pitting John Cena and Shawn Michaels against the Spirit Squad. It seemed like Hunter was coming to the ring to help Michaels, but instead he pedigreed John Cena. The story here though was that Triple H had once again defied Vince McMahon. The next week then, Triple H thought he would be starting the show in a WWE Championship match. However, Vince changed the match into a 3 on 2 Tornado Tag match that also had the IC title on the line along with the WWE Championship. Triple H wasn't happy, this meant he could lose the match without being involved in the final decision, and this is exactly what happened. Shelton Benjamin pinned Rob Van Dam to win the IC title and put an end to the match. Later in the evening, Kenny of the Spirit Squad would face Shawn Michaels, and Shane informed Hunter that Vince expected him to be in Kenny's corner for the match. Shane would also referee this match, and during the bout, Triple H hit Shane with the sledgehammer when Michaels ducked out of the way. Triple H left the ring saying it was an accident, but he didn't look very remorseful. Triple H apologised the next week on Raw, leading to Sean confronting him and calling him a Vince McMahon sellout. Later in the evening, when the Spirit Squad were laying a beatdown into Michaels, Vince McMahon ordered Triple H to come to the ring and finish off the job and prove his loyalty to McMahon. When Kenny took Triple H's sledgehammer to do the job himself, Hunter got mad and took out the entire Spirit Squad as Raw went off the air. The June 5th episode of Raw then, and Vince McMahon felt he knew a way to put an end to all of this Triple H nonsense. A way for both he and the game to put this all behind them and move on. On this episode of Raw, Vince McMahon would invite Hunter to join the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club. Of course, Triple H wouldn't agree to this, and to help him come to his senses, Shane decided to spike Hunter's water. 
Triple H saw it coming and decided to swap the water bottles while Shane took a phone call. In the ring later, Triple H pretended to feel woozy and collapsed to the mat. Soon afterwards, the effects of the magic water hit Shane like a ton of bricks as he too fell to the floor. This prompted Triple H to get back on his feet and hit the pedigree on Vince. A great little segment here thanks to Shane's great acting. Now that Triple H had let out Vince McMahon, there was no going back. Finally, on the June 12th, 2006 episode of Raw, DX would officially reunite. Triple H was booked into a gauntlet match against the entire Spirit Squad as Vince McMahon watched from the stage. Of course, the match would turn into a group beatdown on Triple H, and when the last Spirit Squad member was due to come to the ring, well, he didn't make it out of the entranceway. Instead, he was thrown onto the stage by Shawn Michaels, who had come to help Triple H even the odds. With Vince looking on, Shawn ran to the ring and helped Triple H clear out the Spirit Squad members. The two men looked at each other, gave a DX high five, turned to Vince McMahon and began doing the old DX crotch chop once again. DX was back and their new enemy was Vince McMahon. From this night on, DX would play an important part on Monday Night Raw for months and months to come, and the antics would begin the very next week. Vince started the June 19th episode of Raw off by saying he would destroy DX before the pair could get any kind of momentum. DX started playing pranks early as Vince made his way to the ring, and when Vince got in the ring, he had to quickly leave as Shane told him that Stephanie had just gone into labour, leaving the coach in charge of Raw that evening. Of course, Stephanie wasn't in labour, this was another DX prank. Later during the broadcast, the WWE wasted no time in promoting the next pay-per-view, Vengeance, as the first pay-per-view to feature the returning DX in action as Sean and Hunter was booked to face the entire Spirit Squad. Anyway, on this same broadcast, the Spirit Squad ended up getting covered in green slime as DX set up a trap in the middle of the ring. DX destroyed Vince's office while terrorising the coach. And in the final segment of the show, Sean and Hunter made their way to the ring with the classic DX theme song once again playing in the arena. Sean and Hunter went through their old routine as the crowd ate it up. The audience was going nuts here. If it wasn't already clear from the antics going on earlier in the broadcast, then this promo made it crystal clear that this was not the same DX of late 1997 and early 1998. Far from it, actually. This DX was more about comedy and riding the wave of nostalgia and not so much about being company rebels. And this is something that still irks many wrestling fans to this day. I can see both sides of the argument here, and while I would have really liked to have seen the old DX of 1997, realistically that was never going to happen. The old DX worked so well because of that time period, with the NWO making headlines in WCW, and the connection between the Outsiders and DX creating a compelling and interesting dynamic on Monday Night Wrestling TV shows. Right back at you, that kind of reality could never be duplicated. What maybe could have been done though, and something I would have preferred much more, was DX becoming heels during this 2006 return. Of course, DX became big merchandise sellers and financially having a babyface DX made way more sense, but I think old school fans would have liked to have seen DX being a little rougher around the edges instead of doing this comedy stuff. On top of this, due to Sean's newfound beliefs, he wouldn't contribute in certain DX skits which may have been considered a bit more mature, and fans were quite vocal about this fact too. People also talked about how this new DX was goofy and silly in comparison to the DX of old, and Shawn Michaels made a point in saying in interviews that this was the whole point. Sean said that the new DX could never live up to the old one, these guys were now too old to be considered rebels, so HBK and Triple H tried to go along with this sort of aging rock star gimmick with DX where they would do juvenile things, with the intention being that these guys were too old to be doing all of this, and therefore, it's supposed to be funny. 
The problem I have with this though is that Shawn Michaels had to explain this, and if it had to be explained, then clearly no one got it in the first place. This isn't the consumer's fault, and maybe nobody got it because it didn't seem like this was the angle that Hunter and Sean were going for in the first place. Don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of DX and a fan of both Triple H and Shawn Michaels, but when you turn negative feedback into, well, you didn't get it, it's not our fault, then yeah, you need to accept that it didn't work out as well as what it once did. Fans did, however, really enjoy these early promos, and I remember being stoked to see DX come back. Their first few months were interesting, but it got pretty old pretty quickly. Anyway, to wrap this video up, DX main evented Vengeance, and in the main event, they destroyed the Spirit Squad in their 2 on 5 tag match. DX had a really memorable promo the next night on Raw when Triple H and Shawn Michaels dressed up like Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon, a real highlight of this whole DX reunion. DX would continue feuding with Shane and Vince, but eventually, the duo moved on to a feud with Rated RKO, with their match at Cyber Sunday 2006 being quite good. A rematch was booked for New Year's Revolution in January of 2007, and during this match, Triple H tore his quadriceps 15 minutes into the showdown. This took Triple H out of action for around 7 months, but Sean continued to use the DX theme music and wear the DX colours. The group would again reunite down the road, but we will save that for another time. <laughs>